Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Hi, this is Dave, KE0OG, your guide to studying the ARRL Technician Class License Manual. And we've been through all of the sections of the book with a video introduction for each. Now this is the introduction to what you need to do after you're ready to go uh, get your license. Uh, first of all, uh, you're going to go to a test session that is put together by a group of volunteer examiners. Uh, you can go on the ARRL website. The link is on my uh, website on the main uh, amateur radio page in there and find out when one is a local to you. Most of the time you need to call ahead and uh, make an appointment because sometimes there is uh, limited space. Now, let me suggest to you that you should never acquire amateur radio equipment until you have your license. I've seen too many people buy equipment, not be able to get their license for whatever reason, and then they've got this piece of equipment they can't use. So get the license, then get the equipment. Now, once you've passed your test, you don't have your call sign yet, but once you've passed your test, go ahead and get that equipment so it's coming in the mail to you so when your call sign does appear uh, a few days later on the ARRL website you're ready to roll. So what do you do now? Well getting ready for the test of course review the questions. Uh, perhaps you might have someone help you uh, who can ask you the question, give you the responses and you choose the right one. Now, I want to warn you about something extremely important on the test you will see a question that you've seen before but the order of the answers will be different from what's in the license manual so if you just memorize oh this question the answer is B you're not going to do very well at all because on the actual test it may have been swapped out and it's C so you need to learn the actual answer, not just the letter that goes with it. Questions are not in the same order that they're in the book. They're mixed up around. Now, when you go to the test session, you need to pay. Uh, there's a fee. And uh, at this uh, writing, I think it's around $15. You can be cash or check. They don't take Visa. They don't take anything else. Don't try to barter with them. It's just what it is. Uh, most VE sessions, uh, they don't keep any money. Uh, there are certain circumstances under which they may keep a little bit, like for uh, copying or something. You will need to present them with two forms of identification, one of which must be a photo ID. Now, for you kids who don't have your driver's license yet, you can use something like your school ID. Uh, another thing that I've used as an ID in the past when I've been a volunteer examiner is I'll let a parent, a parent I know, vouch for their kid. but Generally, you want to have your own ID, two forms, at least one with a picture. Now, calculators are okay. There's a couple little simple uh, Ohm's Law calculations, power calculations. You can take calculators, but if they have memories in them, which most do these days, you must be able to demonstrate to a volunteer examiner that all the memories are erased. You can't have any formulas in there or anything like that. Now, cell phones these days are pretty sophisticated. You will not be able to use your cell phone uh, because it's too easy to tap out a message to somebody. They send you the back the right answer via text message. No, that doesn't fly. That won't do. In fact, if you're caught doing that, you'll be tossed out as a cheater. Now, you can use scratch paper. Usually, the VE will supply a piece of scratch paper to everybody because you might want to do the calculations on a piece of paper. Um, now, you must turn in all the scratch paper with your answer sheet. You can't uh, uh, pass it around. Now, different volunteer examiners run their test sessions a little differently. I am a volunteer examiner. I've done over 50 exam sessions. And uh, so I, 
pretty used to the way I like to do it, but other people will do it a different way. Do what your volunteer examiner says to do. Just do it, don't create a problem. Now when you pass your test, you will go away with something called a CSCE, a Certificate of Successful Completion of an Examination. It will be a piece of paper. Do not lose it. Do not lose it. And the reason for that is because um, you, if you were to, uh, two days later before you get your license, you want to try the general test, you have to show them the CSCE and provide them with a paper copy of it. Okay, so don't lose that CSCE. Keep it forever. Uh, you worked really hard for it. Uh, just make sure you don't lose it. Now, after you pass your examination, you've got your CSCE. As soon as your call sign appears online, which could be as short as just a few days, uh, you may operate on the air. Okay? Uh, so you just go ahead and operate with that call sign. Um, and cool, you don't have to wait for the physical license. Now, if you are a technician and you take the test for general, and you get your CSCE for general, you will need to identify with your existing call sign slash AG so people know, yeah, when I look him up, he's a, a tech, but he says he just passed his general exam, and that's what you do. Now, if there's one thing I can say about ham radio, the whole point is to get on the air. So do that. The best way to get on the air is to find another ham with whom you can work to work through all the little vagaries of what the equipment has, uh, the millions of little operational features and so on. We call these helpers Elmers. Go find an Elmer. I've done a lot of it myself. There's a lot of other hams out there. And that's it. We're done. You're ready to go take your test. So do it. Look up today where that test session is. And give those people a call. Get yourself an appointment. Go up there. Get your license and show you can do it. This is Dave, KE0OG. I'll see you on the air, 73.